It's Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to News and Views on Salam Media with me, Aisha Kaji, your guest host for this week. We're now talking about something all of you know, I hope know a lot about, boycotts, boycott, divestment and sanctions, the campaign to force uh, greater solidarity with Palestine and ultimately recognition of the Palestinian state. And of course, right now, to stop the genocide in Gaza and the ethnic cleansing in um, the West Bank, which we've just been talking about regarding land. So we were speaking land and illegal land sales just now with Diana Butu and Adnan Bark. I'd now like to very, very warmly welcome to our studio Leanne Naidu, who's an educator at the Cape Town School of Education at UCT. And she's also a member of a national group that is a network of people for BDS in South African universities. My second guest today is Marin Mantovani, the International Relations Coordinator for the Palestinian Grassroots Stop the War campaign, and also the coordinator for the um, BNC here in South Africa, the local coordinator for that. Welcome to you both, Marin and Leanne. Marin, can we start with you very briefly? Could you give us a rundown of some of the successes that have been encountered in the boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign over the last five months? I believe there have been some serious uh, successes with regard to commercial organizations and corporates. Hello, and thanks a lot for having me. Just a quick uh, specification. I'm not a, a local South African uh, BDS uh, coordinator. I'm a, on the International uh -huh. Secretariat of the Palestinian BDS Network and just currently here in South Africa. But uh, it's a my real apologies. pleasure to be here. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, victories, uh, for the BDS movement are really coming in every day. And I think, uh, while evidently looking at Gaza and at Palestine, the situation is so dramatic and sometimes as well frustrating because we feel we do and we try and we mobilize and this genocide is continuing every day in a more horrendous way. We do need to recognize as well that we are building power, we are building pressure, and Israel is uh, feeling it. Not enough yet. We need to continue. But just saying on uh, what has happened only yesterday evening, when uh, in Canada uh, the parliament uh, passed a motion to uh, freeze and stop arms sales uh, to Israel, a watered down motion, we would have wanted it stronger, but it's still in its substance as no to arms sales to Israel. And that is coming on uh, uh, on the back of uh, in Belgium, uh, uh, the government deciding to uh, stop uh, arms export licenses in uh, Spain, uh, the parliament deciding to stop uh, military exports uh, to Israel. Even uh, Borrell, the foreign uh, affairs chief of the European Union, has called for a stop, a stop for arms sales to Israel. In Japan, uh, the major uh, corporations that are, had a joint venture with Elbit Systems, Israel's biggest military corporation, have cut this uh, um, memorandum of understanding in this joint mm -hmm. venture together with uh, Israel and in uh, Colombia. Uh, one of Israel's biggest arms importers, uh, Gustavo Pedro, the pe president, has clearly said, I'm stopping all military relations with Israel. You cannot have uh, military relations with a genocidal apartheid state. Right. And I want to mention as well that that is something where South Africa has played a key role in because all these... Uh, uh, arms sales, freezes, uh, suspensions, uh, stops, the cutting of military relations come really at the back and as a result of South Africa's uh, case uh, on genocide in the ICJ. And when Absolutely. the ICJ decided that it is plausible genocide, because at this point it becomes really illegal to uh, give weapons, take weapons and have yes. military relations with Israel. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Marin. And I think also, you know, we in South Africa are very aware of the power of boycott and sanctions because of our own past and because it certainly played a part, at times a large part, in creating sufficient pressure on other states to sever relationships with apartheid South Africa. And of course, that's what we were aiming to do here. Leanne, coming to you um, from the BDS network at, at South African universities, what has your experience been of the campaign, the BDS campaign over the last few months, uh, some of its successes, and also the calls for academic and cultural boycott of Israel and Israeli institutions? Yes, uh, thanks so much for having me, and, and I hope everyone's Ramadan is going well um, under these very difficult conditions. Just to say that uh, institutionally at the University of Cape Town, we managed to pass a, a BDS resolution through Senate um, in 2019, that was seen as a major victory, uh, but very quickly because at universities, our highest um, decision-making body is a council, uh, which in the South African context means academics with um, government officials, but also with corporate uh, in people, people uh, representing the corporate sector. And so in 2019, unfortunately, the council sent that resolution back and there was quite a lot of mobilizing by an opposition and that was rescinded. So that's not a very long time ago, five years ago. Um, what I can say now at, at the institution where uh, I work and teach is that we just recently uh, tabled three resolutions at our Senate, which is the highest academic uh, body in the university. And our first motion was unfortunately um, defeated by the opposition. Uh, the numbers were, were close, uh, 75 uh, against the motion of boycott um, of institutions, Israeli institutions. And um, we had managed to get 60 senators uh, to vote in favor, and there were 15 abstentions. Why I'm telling you the detail of this case is to say that the question of boycott is obviously more um, urgently on the table because of the ongoing genocide and war crimes that's happening uh, in Gaza, but also in the occupied uh, territories. And what we are finding is um, that people who ordinarily would continue as usual are um, compelled uh, to sit up to listen. Uh, what is most uh, worrying is that the people who are opposed to boycott also have financial and personal interests in making mm -hmm. sure that we don't support uh, Palestine. So the 15 abstentions in Senate, I think, came about also because what we have is people in power already uh, benefiting of relationships with Israeli institutions and individuals um, who are actually actively mobilizing against um, the possibility of a motion of boycott. We have two other motions at UCT which is going to be debated and we continue to work and struggle to convince people that they must not be pressurized uh, by those who are privileged in the situation. And this comes to my um, my my the question around what solidarity is mm -hmm. and i think for for those of us uh, and in south africa who have been part of the anti-apartheid movement solidarity has always been understood as sacrificing something for those who are in a uh, uh, a worse off position or in a position of uh, oppression and so for for those who already grew, grew up through that um orientation and that act that kind of um activist uh, humanitarian um, anti-oppressive, anti-racist stance, uh, find it easier to, to, to make such a decision and are quite shocked that others don't um, step up mm -hmm. in, in this particular moment. Because if not now, if not in times of war crimes and genocides, then when will people actually step up? So there's a massive battle happening at my university, but to focus more generally in South Africa, all the institutions that have been fighting um, against uh, Israeli occupation continue to do so. Um, mm -hmm. What we do have now is older institutionalized bodies at various institutions like Nelson Mandela University, the University of Johannesburg, University of the Witwatersrand, UWC, UCT, and so on. I can go on. Absolutely. Uh, 
we we have these historic institutions uh, formations that have been there. What we find now this time around in the war crimes and the genocide that has been ongoing for 75 years is that we have newer formations with people, not only young people, not only students, but also academic and administrative staff who ordinarily wouldn't consider themselves to be activists, to be standing up and saying, actually, we need to do something. And universities are important institutions in society. Uh, and we need to fight over the moral and principled stance around a range of issues, this one being uh, primary in the world's consciousness at the moment. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Leanne. And we wish all of those universities and academic institutions and indeed the educators at them uh, success in these initiatives to firstly, um, you know, come uh, to firstly s succeed with uh, an academic boycott of uh, Israeli institutions and a cultural boycott, because we're also looking at sporting and in entertainment, etc. But I just want to mention that up on the screen while you were talking, Leanne, was the list of the BDS uh, call for the different companies, and it's back up there at the moment, the different companies um, targeted in the BDS boycott, and one of them is Starbucks. And until quite recently, there was a Starbucks at one of our universities here in Johannesburg. And apparently that coffee shop has now been rebranded. So a small success, but at a university. Using that, Marin, many people question whether boycott and sanctions actually do work. Yet we've seen in recent uh, months, we've seen Starbucks, McDonald's um, and other companies like that post enormous losses, especially from the loss of their Middle East businesses. Would you care to comment on that? Yeah, Marin? absolutely. I guess uh, boycotts uh, and uh, are one of the key tools uh, that uh, when we started up in 2005, people were laughing at us and saying it is impossible to boycott uh, apartheid Israel. It's not like with South Africa. In 2014, it was uh, the Israeli state institutions that had already said that uh, uh, the BDS movement has become a strategic threat to the sustainability of their war crimes and crimes against humanity. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's important as well to highlight that BDS is not only to end the genocide, it is to end the entire regime of injustice, settler colonialism and apartheid, and including the right of return and then we can talk about justice and then we can uh, end our campaigns. And mm -hmm. just taking an example uh, from uh, uh, the campaigns that you had highlighted here, McDonald's, for example, has just last week uh, posted that it already lost uh, uh, $7 billion mm -hmm. in the campaigns. Uh, that is a very interesting uh, campaign because it has really been launched by uh the grassroots movements the people across the globe and we have taken it up as one of uh the campaigns to promote and it has become a strong campaign to say mcdonald's needs to cut the franchisee uh contract with their israeli franchisee mm -hmm. that is literally feeding the genocide it's really slowly. and i think yeah, it's yeah. Im uh, important to understand how how it works to be effective because many people think the more brands I boycott the better it is and in fact uh, the tactics and the strategy of the BDS movement are quite the opposite if we are many that are focusing on a few brands and are not only not buying them but building really a campaign where we are going and we are protesting and we are educating and we are mobilizing, then we can bring about uh, the uh, pressure that is needed to get even the biggest multinational companies to actually understand that they need to listen to the people and their call, uh, calls for human rights and justice uh, in Palestine. And there it is important as well to follow a bit and take up the campaigns, as you have shown, that in South Africa, the South African BDS coalition is building up or on a global level uh, mm -hmm. than the BDS movement and the, the BNC. So, again, fewer things is more effective.
less Absolutely. in this sense is really better. Totally agree with you there. In fact, you preempted my next question, Marin, which was how do we focus in for more efficiency? And I think you've answered that beautifully in that last statement. Focus on a few brands and really get the pressure building on them. So we've seen, this is a question now to both of you, and we're going to wrap fairly soon after that. So it'll be your sort of final comments. We've seen concerted attempts to boycott. We've seen some successes. What do each of you think is the biggest challenge right now? And what can our listeners and viewers, the public in general, do to really support the work that each of you is doing? Leanne, I'm going to go with you first. Great. Uh, that's a great question. Just to say that this, the idea of whether an institution or an individual has the power is a very important one. And I think individuals have massive power, as Marin has just mentioned, uh, individuals grassroots saying this company we identify and we are now going to boycott and we're going to speak to everyone around us to do the same. So the most important thing is actually for people to recognize that they do have a power uh, to step forward and to choose uh, on the side of justice, choose on the side that is fighting oppression and occupation in various instances we're talking about Palestine today. The difficulty is that it is also important for institutions to take bold decisions. And I think here the South African government taking uh, Israel to the ICJ was really important leadership at an institutional level. And I think at universities, this is necessary. So we need institutions to say, we are cutting ties at that level. And how individuals can help do that is, it is our sisters, brothers, mothers, fathers, neighbors who work at institutions. These are not only um, you know, distant professors. And so it's really important for people to speak to whoever they know who's at an institution and ask what the, the position is. And also leading off of the ICJ case, which was really important is we find now that people want private votes about big issues. They don't want to be seen as being on this side or on that side, but we must proudly say that we do believe that we are on the side of history here and we Very do believe definitely. that this will change. And so people must actually ask those around them who are at institutions, where are you voting on these issues? What are you mm -hmm. doing at your institution to change something? So the Absolutely. individual and the institutional are important. Absolutely. Well, you know, I, I think really this ought to be a public vote. Very, very crucial there. Thank you for that, Leanne. By the way, Leanne, somebody has just texted me to say, wasn't she our representative on the women's vote to Gaza in some years back? And that was in 2016. So, yes, that's the same Leanne Naidu we've just been talking to. Very pertinent points. Marin, your last thoughts? Well, I would take it up where Leanne left it. Uh, on the one hand, I think one key challenge that we are having is uh, to try to explain uh, to people that the question of Palestine, the battle to end the genocide in Gaza, is uh, not only a question of uh, saving the Palestinian people, supporting the Palestinian people in their struggle against Israeli apartheid and genocide, but it's a question for humanity. What is happening in Gaza and the reason why the West is supporting the Israeli uh, regime with whatever it can is because Gaza is supposed to be a model for a new world where everything goes, where there is no international law, where there are no human rights. So if Israel can get away with it, that is something that isn't harming only the Palestinian people, that will change the world. And that is why we have the obligation to really change and stop uh, this genocide. I think that is the first thing that we should keep always in mind. This is a question for human humanity, a litmus test for humanity. There we On go. the other hand, I think the question is as well, after months and months of struggling against this genocide, don't give up, don't be frustrated. We do not have the luxury. Palestinians cannot uh, uh, live without our solidarity. We need to stand up, we need to continue struggling. And in the same way, uh, as the South African government has brought the uh, court the question of the genocide uh, against the Palestinian people to the international court. We need to understand as well 
that that ruling is not a self-fulfilling ruling. Mm -hmm. That ruling needs to be implemented. And that means governments need to continue and need to put sanctions on Israel, economic mm -hmm. sanctions, military sanctions on a national level and uh, on the level of the United Nations. And we need to be in the front lines to do our boycotts when we go and when we do the shopping to organize in the universities, in our institutions and to continue to pressure governments to do a step forward every day more. Because, Absolutely. I'm uh, sorry, Maren, we're running out of time. So I'm going to have to cut you there. I'm really, really sorry to have to do that. But very wonderful message. Important. Don't give up. It's a question of humanity. We need to continue pressuring for boycotts, for divestment and for sanctions. Thank you very much to my two guests today, Marin Mantovani and Leanne Naidu, respectively. Really great to have had you on. I would like to play out before we get to an ad break with a quote from Leanne's Ruth First lecture a couple of years ago. May we live in a time of difficulty, of critical imminence, and always, always towards justice. Over to you for an ad break now. <laughs> 